Hi, my name is Dave, and today I'm going to show you how to save a ton of time to create interactive scenes in VR. First off, let's take a look at our scene. Here I have a few objects that I've imported from Maya. In my object list, I can see a list of the objects here and I can select them one at a time. I can use the escape key to deselect. Over here we have the player camera. Rio has two sorts of cameras. One is a player camera and the other is an edit mode camera. The player camera defines where the user will be located in your scene. In this tutorial, we're going to show how we can use some of the unique Brio behaviors to open up the door interactively as the players move towards the doors. Let's set up some waypoints so we can control how the player moves towards the doors. I'm going to hit the waypoints button down below. And then this allows me to actually set up some a path for the camera here. So I can, I've already got some points here, as you can see, that's what this point is here. You can select the camera, and one of the tricks here, you can actually go ahead and hit this trash can, and it will delete all the points. When this player camera is selected, you can see over here in the bottom left, there's like a preview of where, what that camera is actually seeing. So you can see as I move it, it that window down there up, updates. So for this, we're just going to set up uh, the camera and have it looking forward. The camera and all the objects in Brio have, by default, a snapping behavior. You can turn that on and off in the Preferences panel up here. So if you go up to the Settings uh, window, actually, it's called Settings, and um, press the Transfer button, there you can set the rotation amount. So I'm just going to turn that off, set that to zero, and close that window. So I've got my camera here, and I want to set one waypoint to actually just walk towards the doors. So I'm going to go ahead and click once, and that's going to set the next waypoint. And if I select it, then I get a preview of what that waypoint actually sees at that point in time. So there we go. So you can see there what it's looking at. Now, if, let's take a closer look at this waypoint. If we zoom in on it, we can see that it's got this little it's got a couple of different things here. It's got this little yellow arrow on the front of it. And, and then there's the body of the waypoint itself. Well, whatever that little yellow arrow is pointing at, that's what the camera is going to be seeing. That's what you're going to be looking at at that point in time. So you could just pull that back. I don't want to actually get, actually want to get close to the door, but not super close. So the next point about the waypoints is how do you control the speed? So if we push play on the camera, we can actually preview how fast the camera actually moves towards that waypoint. You could push pause and it will reset itself. If you want to slow down that timing, you just select the destination point. Select the destination point, And then in the speed, you actually reduce the speed. So there are no keyframes or anything like that. You just control all the speed with this little slider here. So I can set this to, let's say, for example, 0.3. And now when I play, you'll notice that the motion is a lot slower going towards the, the second waypoint. And I think I'm okay with this. So I'm going to say click here to finish, push the button, and then we're going to in the bottom left, we're going to hit the player view. So now I can push pause and reset it. And then when I push play, I can get a preview of how I'm actually going to zoom into that second waypoint. Um, note that any time you can rotate and look around and kind of simulate what the what your player, what your audience would be doing as they're looking around the scene, as they're being sort of uh, animated through your scene. Okay, finally, let's look at how we can actually have the doors open up as the player camera moves near. So for this, we're going to set up some Brio behaviors, and we're going to use a dummy object to actually have that work for us. So I'm going to go down to my eSwag library. I'm going to grab a cube and just drag it into my scene. So this cube we're going to use as the proximity object that will trigger the doors to open. So we're just going to leave that there and set it in a position that's kind of right on your path. You don't want to have it way over here. You just want to have it right on the player camera path. 
Next, we're going to take a look at the pivot points for our doors. So we're just going to select one of the doors. You can double click a door and actually get that object to be framed in the camera. So you can see here that the pivot point for this object is located over here. Um, to set up our move behavior, it's going to be more friendly for us if the pivot point is on the edge of the door in this case. So I'm just going to go up to the settings menu and click on this button here that says modify pivot. So when we click that, we get this pre preview cage that have these, has these little indicators on the corners of the bounding box of the object. If you, by clicking on any one of these little indicators, you can actually snap the pivot to that location. So in this case, I'm just going to click this edge here. The pivot point is going to, for the door is going to move to that location. And then I'm going to click back in the menu again to finish. So now that pivot point is actually located on the edge of that door. So I'm going to slide the door forward just a little bit. Just to get it sort of partially in its start position. Next, let's go ahead in and add our triggers to open the doors. So just for a moment, let me talk about how this will actually work. So if you think about this, what we're wanting to happen is this player camera is going to come into this box and basically um, that, act, that sort of event is going, needs to trigger this object to move. So that tells us we actually need to apply a trigger to the box first. So we're going to go into, let's go into the behaviors menu down here at the bottom, and then we're going to go over to triggers and we're going to drag and drop the proximity trigger onto the box here. Now note that you can drag up the triggers onto items directly in the scene, or you can go on the object list and drag that same proximity trigger onto, or any trigger onto any object directly in the object list. So there's two different ways that you can apply the triggers. And depending on the complexity of the scene, sometimes it's more friendly to drag the trigger onto the item in the object list directly. Um, so with that trigger selected, notice that the options or the properties for that trigger are displayed down here below. Uh, the main uh, sort of option that's on by default is the, that the player will actually trigger uh, the event to happen. Um, in other videos, I will explain more about how multiple objects can trigger an event to happen. And these can be used to create really, really cool uh, sort of game gameplay uh, directly here within Brio. So if you look at our trigger, it, it will actually ask you to add an action onto an object. So what we're going to do next, and it's red here next to it, so that means that the sort of the you have not completed all of the necessary requirements to have that trigger actually function on something. So it's going to, we're, in our case, we want it to drive this door. So we're going to go out to um, the action menu and we're going to place the move, we're going to drag and drop the move trigger now, the move action rather, onto the door itself. So once I do that, the camera will actually navigate to this top down point of view and will allow you to then click a waypoint or a series of waypoints. And in our case, we just want to click once. And then we have some options for the move behavior itself down below. Whichever node here in your behavior chain is selected, you can see the properties for it. So in our case, these options by default are fine. We're just going to test it as is. And we're going to go back. And just let's just run a test on this and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and press play. And let the cam so you can notice that the player camera is actually moving towards this box. And let's see what happens when the camera actually moves into that box. Great. So our door is actually opening. So next, we're going to work on the second door in our door opening tutorial. So the way to think about this is we've created one proximity trigger 
for the, the initial door to open up. Now, in order to have Brio open the second door, you need to think about this as like two triggers that are actually triggering uh, two different objects in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my door. I'm going to select this door again, go to the settings menu, set the pivot point for it. I'm going to just click on that, click finish. And then we're going to move this door out to its default position. Sort of here, looks good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select our cube and we're going to go down to the behaviors, go to triggers. We're going to drag another proximity trigger. Now this time, let's take a look at this here. We're actually going to drag at the end of our behavior chain. It says here to create a new parallel chain, we need to drag on this little sort of purple chain icon with the, with the plus sign on it. So if you drag on that, that's going to create a new sort of parallel set of, of, of events. So we're going to drag that proximity trigger on that. And then we're going to drag the move behavior onto the second door. It's going to go to the top view. We're going to click once to set our move. And then, so now we should be left with two proximity triggers that are behaving at the same time. And they're operating on two different objects as well. So one is working on the left door and then the other one is working on the right door. So let's just go ahead and press, press play to see how that works. So we're going to go ahead and press play. Great, so now our doors are opening. So let's go ahead and start cleaning this up. And I want to do one final thing before we uh, end this tutorial, which is to add a, a small sound effect. So we're going to start by, um, let's get this cube so it's hidden. So I'm, I'm going to, the way I'm going to do that is just going to select it. I'm going to set the opacity to zero. And then we can just go into the object list and we can actually just select it and hide it. So click this little, this little eye icon here to toggle the visibility off. Just go ahead and select, click that and it'll turn off the visibility of the cube, but the proximity triggers should still work. So finally, let's end this tutorial by adding some sound to the doors. So when the players approach the doors, you would actually hear the sound as the doors open. So let's begin by uploading our sound effect. We're going to go ahead and upload this to the scene. And you'll notice that the loading bar will go across the screen as the object loads. Now, Let's take note by default, Brio uh, sort of expects the sounds to be played as a background sound. And so you can actually push play and hear what that sound is going to sound like. Uh, in order for that to happen, Brio automatically creates a sound action next to that sound object. We want to actually have that action be driven by our proximity trigger. So what we're going to do is actually remove that default sound effect. And so that it's, it's, it's blank. Okay. Um, then what we're going to do is go over to our triggers. We're going to go to the proximity trigger and we're going to drag the proximity trigger over into the object list, making sure you're hovering over on top of the cube and release. And you'll notice that a third chain is going to be created down here in the behavior chains that is, uh, requesting for an action to be applied. So in our case, we want an audio action to actually happen when this proximity trigger, this third proximity trigger chain is, is fired. So in our case, then we're going to drag the audio action onto the audio node here in the object list. So we're just going to drag and make sure you're over the audio node and release. And you notice here then in our little Brio behavior storyboard, you can see the proximity trigger, then the audio event, and it's, it's action that's going to ha happen here. So let's test this to see if this works. So go ahead and press play. We're going to watch our player camera come down the scene, come down to the waypoints, and as it gets close to the door, the door is open and the sound is played. 
So that concludes this tutorial. What's ne left next to do to actually get this to be live and something that you can actually play with on your Oculus Rift or your Vive or your Gear VR or Daydream, just press publish. That's all you have to do. And um, that's gonna generate a link for you and you'll be able to actually interact with that scene. So you give it a name and push publish and that will appear on the discovery page. It'll generate a link and you can send that to your friends or share it. And anyone who clicks that link can view the experience.